Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter here with our final set of experiments in our sort of clump foliage terrain lab adventure we've been having. Now over the previous experiments what we've looked at is we've looked at uh, ratios of paint to PVA, we've looked at uh, ratios of our mix to quantities of foam, we've looked at different types of foam, we've got a pretty good handle on it. Yeah, but just to wind up the experiments, yeah, I reached out to everyone and if you've been following the series you'll know and if not, yeah, we reached out to everyone and sort of said, right, what are your suggestions, what other things should we look at? Yeah, and a few interesting one came, ones came back. Now, uh, here are some of the suggestions and the experiments we're going to be looking at in this one. Okay, now, someone suggested using kitchen sponges because the colours give you a uh, better variation when it's actually dyed green and more realistic and also they reckon the texture is quite interesting as well so we're going to give that a go yeah quite a few people sort of suggested wet blending moist foam as a way because one of the issues we had was with our mixed penetration getting into the center of larger clumps and quite a few people have sort of suggested yeah let's try wet blending and that sort of stuff so I've got my cheap £10 blender here and we're going to be blending in that so we'll be giving that a go someone also suggested perhaps flow aid yeah to help it flow now what I thought was is if it works with the water there's no need for the flow aid yeah if it doesn't work with the water then it's worth re-looking at it and perhaps using flow aid but I think that's quite expensive sort of route to go down Okay. Now another thing I wanted to look at was also a mix of pure paint. I dropped the PVA completely and just see how that does because a couple of people said, you know, don't use PVA in the mix. Yeah. And also I want to have a look at acrylic just from my point of view. That's something I want to have a look at compared to our standard emulsion house paint. Okay. And there was also a suggestion of using glycerol yeah to get a more of a rubbery feel and what I'd like to do with that is once I've got a handle on all these sort of things yeah and I think I've got it right yeah then I'm gonna look at glycerol okay and see what that adds to the mix one because it's such an extra variable you know it's completely out there you know the the experience we're doing here is still within our sort of subset of experiments so I understand you know what different things will do and I'll be able to understand it with glycerol being such an out there variable yeah, I really want to sort of make sure I've got a proper handle on the clump foliage so I can see what the glycerol make the difference it makes. Now previously, yeah, I filmed actually, you know, me drawing all the paint up and mixing everything and all that sort of stuff. And if you want to see me doing that, yeah, go check out the other videos. Yeah, there, there'll have been a link on the vid. But I'm just going to crack on. So I'm going to crack on now, yeah. And we're going to come back, yeah, once I've got them all mixed up. We'll have a quick comment before we leave them to dry. So I'll see you shortly, guys. Let's crack on. Okay guys, that's the uh, batch of experiments all mixed up and my hands, a mixture of bits of green and you know what it's like. Right, quick run through. Over here we've got our kitchen foam, yeah, uh, mixing up is perfectly fine, blending it, perfectly fine. I see what they mean about the colour variation, it does work. I'm not sure about the scourer pad texture, but the mix of the base colours of the foam does give an alternative sort of look to it, and it's quite nice, I'll give you that. Over here we've got our control group, which was one millilitre of PVA, nine millilitres of paint, to one cup or 250 millilitres volume-wise of our dry foam. And that's our control group that we'll be using to sort of compare everything against. Now over here we've got the same amount of foam, but, foam, but this is just paint. So we can sort of have a look at how that goes. Yeah, uh, over here we've got just, a, no, not just acrylic. This is one mil of PVA, nine mils of uh, Galleria acrylic paint. Yeah, that went in really rich, really creamy. Uh, I have no doubt that, what you call it, the pigment will carry all the way through on this one from the mixing. So we'll see when it dries. Right, over here we've got the moist foam. Okay, now that mixed really well. And basically for the moist foam, it was dry blended. It was then soaked in water and squeezed out again. Yeah, and that, that mixed very well. And I'm expecting the pigment to carry through better. Yeah, from that, from our control to that one. A tiny, tiny, slight a bit lighter than our control one there. And I think that's because the water's diluted the pigment down a bit. Now, moving on to the very last one over here. This was our wet blend. Now, straight away... From a look, it's brilliant. I mean, I'll pick a bit off and bring it up. Yeah. It does look really good. 
okay obviously it's a lot lighter now I think that's the moisture because there was a lot of moisture in that but also because it was wet blended the foam was far more com compact and I think well you can tell there's more foam in, when it was wet blended in this cup that to our standard mix and I think that's sort of made it a lot lighter okay but we know we can adjust ratios and that sort of thing in the future the idea was to have a look at all the various effects of the blending etc okay now the best thing I can suggest is we're gonna leave this now let it all dry we'll come back sort of midday tomorrow yeah and we'll get our final results ready for doing our sort of ultimate tutorial thingy okay guys I'll see you in the morning so guys, it's the afternoon and they've spent the day in the shed, the metal shed, which is much like an oven and they're completely dry. Okay, so very quickly let's run through what we've got here. Obviously we've got our dye sponges, we've got our control, we've got our just paint, we've got our acrylic with a bit of PVA in, we've got moist foam and then we've got our wet blend. So working down on the control, these obviously stuck together quite well so it's very clumpy as we'd expected, quite good actually. Yeah, and we're expecting yeah this coverage to not go all the way through and you can see yeah in sort of certain elements it hasn't yeah and that's what we expected because we set it up with the same sort of ratios as it failed last time so we could appreciate whether you know adding water and all the other things you know have affected it now looking at the kitchen sponge yeah and if I grab this and bring it up yeah there you go yeah now straight off yeah those different shades from the sponges the red and the blue and the, and the yellow really have given it a lovely lovely texture I'm not sure about the scouring pads I'd probably rip those off yeah they're, they're personal preference they're not a deal breaker yeah but I you, they're not for me if you know what I mean now this is still pretty chunky yeah but we know there's things we can do about that okay now moving on to the just paint yeah now this is a bit softer than the mix with the PVA in okay and with regards to penetration it seems to have penetrated pretty well have we got a decent large bit I mean, I did squeeze these a lot more than the other ones, so, yeah, we are getting better coverage, much better coverage, okay? But it doesn't feel as firm as with the, the PVA mixed in, okay? Right, moving up, the next one was our acrylic paint. Now, these, yeah, when I mixed it, it was like, yeah, this will have no problem penetrating. The other thing that's quite interesting about this stuff is it's really firm, really, really firm. You know, that acrylic has made a massive difference compared to house paint. And if we tear apart a big point, yeah, you can see because of the, the high, what you call it, uh, high, what are they? Uh, not particles, pigment, high pigment count of it. Yeah, it has penetrated all the way through with no problems whatsoever. So, you know, if you can find cheap acrylics, then, you know, there is a definite upside to using acrylics over house paint. Okay, but, you know, that's a cost factor. And with how rich that is, I reckon we could have done a lot more foam with, ten, with 9 mils of acrylic and 1 mil of PVA. Uh, right, the moist foam. Okay, it feels, yeah, much like our control. But, yeah, it did when it was mixing, seem to be, seem to mix a lot easier. I mean, it's still slightly damp, actually, if you look at my finger. Yeah, but the penetration is brilliant. So, I mean, using mix... You blind, dry blending the foam, then w wetting it and squeezing the, the excess out really helps get the pigment carried through. I mean, from what I can tell, there's no real difference in the pigment colour. The, the only time we've had any real change in the pigment colour across these is with our wet blend. Now, if you remember, this was thrown into the blender yeah, and blended with water, and it's created a much, much finer, scrubbier blend. Yeah, really nice. This is really nice. I may have overblended it, to be perfectly honest. Now, it's a lot lighter because there was a lot more water in it, and also the, there was a higher volume of foam, yeah, because obviously it was a little bit more difficult to work out because I wasn't measuring wet foam. This was dry foam, and this was... Sorry, I wasn't measuring dry foam as I had done with the other experiments. I was measuring wet foam. Yeah, and obviously, you know, because of the, like, compression and all that sort of stuff, there was more foam. So the pigment hasn't gone far, but I think... If you threw, what you call it, if you threw uh, more, perhaps acrylic paint and a bit of PVA to get the clumping, I think we could be on with something there. So wet blending is definitely something to look at. Now, as, you, as I, I sort of mentioned, we haven't done our, what you call it, uh, chipping foam yet. So it'll be interesting to see how that affects it, etc. So, 
where do we go from here? Well, basically, yeah, this is probably going to go in the bin or more experiments and that sort of stuff. But, yeah, this has given me a pretty good handle on the last few sort of variables with making uh, clump foliage foam. Uh, foam clump foliage, should I say. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a play around with this for about another week or so, yeah, and see if I can get a really good, decent recipe and, you know, and then I'll come back with a proper tutorial showing you all the steps, the ratios, and what I reckon works really well, and things you can sort of do to change the mix, depending on how you're going to use it. So, that's the battle plan. Thanks for sticking with me through these set of experiments, guys. I know the Terrain Labs aren't the most thrilling or informative of videos, but, you know, this is how we get to be better terrain builders, by actually drilling down and understanding our materials. So, it, it, it's a necessary evil. I won't say it's an evil, but it's a necessary step. Okay, as always, yeah, like it if you've liked it. Uh, if you've got any, if you know anyone who find it useful, obviously share it. If you've got any questions, any other additional things to think about, any comments, throw them in the comments, guys. Remember, I always answer my comments. And finally, the usual shout out for Patreon. If you really like what I do and you want to sort of like give me a hand, check out Patreon and consider tipping me a buck a month, guys, you know, to sort of help the foam and all the stuff keep going. Yeah, so I can keep doing all these glorious experiments and stuff like that. Obviously, no pressure. And if you don't, don't worry about it because we're going to be cracking on regardless. Yeah, so that was our terrain lab experiments into clump foliage. We've done quite how many? We've done about one, two, 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 I think we've done we've done quite a few experiments. I think we've done about 12, 15, somewhere around that in total, including the stuff that's been off camera. Really good series, guys. So I will see you coming real soon. And once I've got this down, we've got it perfect. That this is the last ingredient for my Burma build, so we'll be starting my Burmese jungle real soon. Right, guys, have a good one, and I'll see you soon. All the best, yeah. Sarah.